Hi friend. Things have been a little strange here lately. Um, I've placed orders and, and usually they pack them and ship them the same day. It's been taking five days to a week for uh, certain websites to pack my parts and get them out to me. Um, so I'm basically just waiting for parts and I just cannot complete some of these projects. So what we're going to do today is look at this little PCB that I make. Now what this does is it connects your power and it also controls your switching and LED. And take for example, this is my Klon clone that I've been making. And as you can see, the switching unit is here. It has the switch on it. It has the power leads and the filtering for the power. And it also has the jacks connected to it. Uh, it fits in any of the enclosures, including the 1590A. And it simplifies the uh, schematics for the rest of the circuit. Basically, I've noticed that it's pretty much the same on every pedal that's true bypass so I figured why not split that off um, it also makes it so that there can be space between them and you don't have this big PCB that fills up the entire section here so it's less money because this section here doesn't have anything in it um, I also have them spaced so that you could get ribbon wire to go between the two pieces and it just works out and I use it on almost everything. Um, so let's go through that and we'll show you how it works. That sounds good. Join me. Okay, this is my schematic. I call it BIOP because it's an optical bypass. Uh, you could see that, see these IOs right here? That is in, if you go to Homespun Library, it's the IO pads BIOP. And you can see it has these six pads. And when you place them, the more you need them. This is your input, your output, your nine volt, going to from the buy up to the pedal circuit. This is your LED plus and minus, and this is the ground between the two. But let's get rid of those, and we will explain how this works. Now this is your input jack right here, and this is your output jack. You can see that the input connects directly to the output. The tip of this input goes directly through this switch to the output. So that's in bypass mode. But when it's in, when it's switched on, this isn't connected here. And this goes from the output tip to the output of this right here. It goes here. And the input goes from here to here. But when this is in this off position and this is connected here from this tip to this tip when it's in bypass mode, this input to the circuit is also going directly to ground. Now when that's off, there's no path from the power which goes through this switch, through this resistor, it goes to the LED plus on the board and then back to the LED out. You can also see that this section right here is the same thing that we have in every pedal for the power in. It goes through a tiny resistor to keep any radio frequencies out. Hopefully it does. Uh, you have your reverse protection diode, reverse polarity, to reverse polarity protection diode. You have your smoothing capacitors here and then it goes to the board and I just have these so that 
we have ground between this buy-up board and the ground of the circuit of the pedal. Now this optical switch here, when it gets power to it, it goes through the LED and then it goes through the switch. When it's grounded, that's when the LED is on. This bypass is open here so that it goes through here and the input goes through here. Let's take a look at that real quick. That is here. This is our H11F1. Basically, here's how it works. There's an infrared light emitting There's an infrared light emitting diode here and there's an optical sensing looks like a FET. Let's see what is it? It is a FET. And that goes from when there's light on it, you have less than 100 ohms there. And when there's no light on it, you have 300 mega ohms. So it basically is a switch that's on and off between these two terminals. Right here, between these two terminals. And let's see here. You can see there are six pins to this. Uh, it's just the one I've always used here, the H11F1. Uh, there are other options like this TLP222. It's a little smaller and it only has four pins. And as an added bonus, let's see, where was that listed? Right here. On state resistance is only two ohms. So I think we're going to switch the schematic eventually to use this instead. Let's see. But for right now, this is how it's going to work out. And I have this little note here because you could change these values. Um, this reverse polarity protection diode is often a different value. It doesn't matter in these nine volt circuits. This is only if you have thousands of volts, hundreds and thousands of volts. And sometimes I put a Zener diode in there to keep uh, Klon clone to be equivalent to its origin, original design. But again, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's it. We have your smoothing here. We have your LED here, and we have your switching here. Simple. This is how I have it laid out. Tighter. Maybe we can see it a little bit better. There. Not much to see here. Uh, it's a very simple circuit, very simple PCB. I think I may eventually. Uh, redesign it so that it fits directly in a 1590A. Yeah, see that already fits in there just nicely. Yeah, that's perfect. It's it's already a good size and, and these notches will work with. All right, let's put that back in there, that enclosure. Yeah, see how the notches already fit in there? That's where it would be. We could get this tighter around here by making this circular and we could probably move these down further. In fact, we may do that. Not right now, but in the future. I just wanted to show you how this biop circuit works for today. And uh, if you're interested in making it cleaner for the uh, 1590As, we could do that. We could go through it. But I just want to show you how it works and what we're going to do in the future. Um, I think we're going to make every pedal using this from now on because that's what I do and it just works. Uh, you can see here is that homespun input output pads right there. It's these six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have one for the nine volt coming in and the ground coming in. 
right there. And here's your input and your output jacks and your smoothing capacitors here and here. This is your 100 ohm R1 that we have on there. Another thing I think I'm going to do is this R2 that controls the LEDs. I think what we're going to do is make that into a potentiometer so that we could, we'll put a small, maybe a 1K in there and then put a potentiometer after it, like a trim pot, so we could change the brightness of the LED. Um, if you look at like my clone that uses the biop, this is it. You could see that this is where the homespun biop pads are, and they directly line up. So this out goes to the out on the switching board. The 9 volt goes across. The LEDs go across. The input and the ground go right across like that. Um, it just simplifies everything. And I think we should plan on using this for everything. And I think that's all for today. If you have any questions on how this works, let me know. And uh, I think next week we will redesign this. We'll add the very, uh, the variable resistor for the LED because a lot of my circuits, when you put a 3.9 in there like I have here, some of these LEDs, especially these water clears, can get pretty bright. And you look right down, you can't even see the, the knobs that you want to turn. Uh, you could tame that a little bit with a potentiometer. I think we're going to do that. But for now, I think I'm going to sign off, and I hope you have a great day.